ಪ್ರಕಾರ ವಂದನೆಗಳು ಈಗ ಒಂದು ಗಣಪತಿ ಶಿಸ್ತ್ರವನ್ನು ಹಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ present here i request the panelists and moderator to please take their seats on the dais a very warm welcome to the esteemed guests faculty and students i am deepika of ba english honors department of liberal arts humanities and social sciences i welcome all of you to the session on bhakti tradition in india and its proliferation through various performing arts including street singing bhakti which distinguishes itself from other religious traditions in india is very well known for its transcendental approach to its spirituality based on the universality of the personal connection with the divine this urban centered socio spiritual movement has had a long history of involving diverse art forms in its dissemination of bhakti as it spread in its numerous ways across india street singers carry on the tradition of devotion by moving from house to house performing bhajanas kirtanas abhangs and tatva padas their appearance at the doorsteps of household in urban and small towns of karnataka often goes with the muted recognition of a fading tradition the session proposes to reflect on the symbolism and relevance of this significant cultural marker it is my utmost pleasure to introduce the panelists and the moderators for this session dr h s shiva prakash the former director of tagore center for indian embassy in berlin and a retired professor from the school of arts and aesthetics jnu new delhi currently works as a columnist for the hindu prajavani and cnn ibn channel website he is a recipient of the mhrd fellowship for literature in 1996 he is also the winner of multiple awards few of them include the sangeet natak academy award in 1997 and the sahitya academy award in 2013 he is also the winner of four karnataka sahitya academy best book prizes and the winner of karnataka natak academy award 
His best known work is the play Mahachaitra, which uses a Marxist angle to describe the struggles of the Kalyana city's artists and saints. It is based on the life and the times of Baswanna, a Lingayat saint who lived in the 12th century. His recent publications include Guru, Ten Doors to the Ancient Wisdom, 2018, In Other Words, 2014, Everyday Yogi, in 2014. His fields of interest include Bhakti studies, Tantric studies, folklore, and linguistic related fields. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Shiv Prakash. <laughs> Sri Dharmana Mahanta is a popular street musician who moves from house to house singing bhakti songs. His family migrated to Udupi from their native village near Hubli 35 years ago and have lived in Udupi ever since. Mahanta belongs to the Beda uh, Jangama community, which continues the tradition of singing bhajanas, bhachanas, abhangas, and tatvapadas in North Karnataka and the Karnataka Maharashtra border region. Mahanta also represents the tradition of Hagalu Veshadharis, who perform songs and move from place to place. Accompanying Mr. Dharmana Mahanta are the artists Mr. Manjanath and Mr. Suresh in Tala Tabla, respectively. The moderator for today's session is Prithviraj Kavatur. Prithviraj Kavatur SK graduated from Mangalore University with a master's degree in Kannada literature. He has over 24 years of experience in Kannada journalism, from a sub-editor to an independent editor of magazines. He has authored and edited four Kannada books and published a number of articles in reputed journals. I request the panelist and moderator to take over. Thank you. Thanks for introducing us to the audience. And also, thanks for hosting this session in this edition of Mila. Uh, today is, you know, third day of the Mila. Now, it is pleasure to have a scholar of the stage chair, Professor Shiva Prakash, on this panel. It is not necessary to introduce Professor Shiva Prakash to the literary and academic circle. Uh, Professor Shiva Prakash is an authority in the field of literature. As you know, he has authored many books, delivered lectures in Kannada and English. Professor Shiva Prakash is also an authentic person to talk about bhakti tradition. Uh, it is more significant that we have with us on the stage the practitioners of bhakti tradition. Their bhakti uh, they are practitioners of bhakti tradition on the streets. Mr. Dharmanda Mahanta is one of the well-known street bhakti singers who has dedicated his life to disseminating and sustaining the idea of bhakti traditions through singing. Dharmanda and team has been moving on the streets for years singing tatvapada, vachanas, kirtanas and abhangs. Uh, I would like to say some words about this session. Today's session is about the dissemination of bhakti arts in South India, past and present. The bhakti, bhakti padas, though they were written or they were sung centuries ago, continues to remain in the public memory. They have become the part of society and people. Uh, since they are still performed in the present days, we cannot say that they belong to the past. So it would, be, it would be interesting that how we receive the past in the present and how the past becomes the present continuous. So we will see it through the bhakti tradition and I think this would be the main focus of this session. Before going for Professor Shiva Prakash talk, I request Dharmanna Mahanta and his group to present a Tattvapada. Uh, Dharmanna, Vare, Namaskara. You have a Tattvapada, Mulaka, 
ಈ ಕಲಾಪವನ್ನು ಆರಂಭಿಸಬೇಕಂತ ನಾನು ಕೇಳಿಕೊಳ್ತೇನೆ ಆಯ್ತು ಸರ್ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಧರ್ಮಣ್ಣ ಅವರೇ ನಾವು ಐ ಇನ್ವೈಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಶಿವಪ್ರಕಾಶ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ವ್ಯೂಸ್ ಆನ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಕುಡ್ ಯು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಬಿಗ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿತ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಗ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ವರ್ಡ್ ರೂಪ ಬಣ್ಣಕ್ಕಾಗಿ ರೂಪ ದ ಹೋಲ್ song is about the dissolution dissolution meant with rupa form it reminded me of a great line by tagore 
রূপ সাগরে ডুবি আমি অরূপ রতন চাই আই ড্রাউন মাই সেলফ ইন দি ওশন অফ ফর্মস টু ফাইন্ড দ্য ডাইমেন্ড অফ ফর্মলেসনেস দিস ইজ দ্য থ্রাস্ট অফ আওয়ার ফোক সংস spiritual songs they have different names in different parts of india tagore himself had drowned himself in the influence of bowls which is the bengali counterpart of this tattopada tradition in karnataka unfortunately karnataka had no tagore to imbibe this great tradition into one's creative imagination. This tradition was kept outside the mainstream modern literature. Our literary historians were not aware of it because their the histories were fake histories, slavishly imitative histories. They read up histories of English literature, age of Chaucer, age of Shakespeare, what's what we call the Jewish age and modern age. They said, Pampa Yuga, Basavi Yuga, Kumar Yasa Yuga, Adhinika Yuga. Sometimes they even communalized it. Jaina Yuga, Virasha Yuga, Brahman Yuga, Adhinika Yuga. This is how they looked at the past of our tradition and if you read kavi kavi chaitre or even ramshri smugri standard textbook which has to be jettisoned today altogether you don't find mention of any great author of tatvapada karas and what is tatvapada people don't know there's a tatva they translate into english philosophy philosophical songs no the tradition itself the oral tradition of tatvapadakaras avadutas charana poe charana they are always moving they have their own interpretation of it one of my gurus shivanand avaduta of pandavapura explained it to me he asked what is tattva he said tattva pada means tattva tattva masi that which tells you you are that pada pada means both song it also means the uh, uh, kind of a throne tattva pada It is the highest throne of human self to be one with the cosmic self. That's the meaning of Tattva Pada. I quoted Tagore, but inadvertently, because it sums it up all. Tattva Padas, quite a few of them are didactic, like the one they sang now. And the one he sang, for the kind of denigration of material life because most of these singers were on the margins of society ill treated by society shishnal sharif has this song once he went to kulakarni village head for some help with some money he gave him one coin he says kulakarni kotta pavali rokka ide nambi illige bandello manase this I came to the school karni for some help just give me one coin oh my poor heart why did you come here so it universalizes the suffering of mankind whose first quintessential expression you f- we find in samanik religion buddhism it says sabbe sankara dukkha the whole all everything is dukkha one side of tatvapadas 
The other side is the opposite. It's the celebration. One of the celebrations is bhakti. Before I proceed, a lot of people have misconception about bhakti. Bhakti is not part of any religion. It is something that inheres and transcends all religions. And our bhakti traditions, in fact, in fact when I started thinking about bhakti traditions, used to call it only bhakti. Now, I have changed my views about it. I call it bhakti and siddha tradition. In medieval India, in ancient, there are two approaches to the divine. One is the path of self-effacement. Bhakti is self-effacement. Basavana puts it, Yanna kaayava dandigaya maadiya, make my body into a lute. Bhakti is a raga unisaya. So make my body into a lute and you play your 32 tunes on this. And the other is the Siddha path. Siddha path is not Bhakti is love of God. Bhakti Parama Prema Swarupa says Narada Bhakti Sutra. And some people, this is the highest path. Acharya Utpal Acharya, the author of Shiva Sutra, written in the 9th century in Kashmir. He says that. Dukkam Sukhayate, Visham Amrutayate, Shiva Margena. On the path of Shiva, sorrow becomes happiness, Venom becomes Amrut. In Bhakti, the approach is, Uttpalatatta says, yogis have to do tapasya for so many years to find Shiva. But a bhakta, the moment he utters the word Shiva, he attains that state of ecstasy which yogis have to work for for ages and ages. This is the approach of bhakti. The other is the Siddha tradition, and the, the another synonym of the Siddha tradition is Nirguna Bhakti of North India, Kabir Pant, for example. This and which 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 is dovetails with Goratna tradition, the yoga, tantric tradition, actually yoga is part of tantra. Some people fight shy of the word tantra because tantra has been made into kind of a, a passport for free sex uh, by American enthusiasts for uh, tantra. Tantra is a lot more than that. All our popular worship we do in India is extension of tantra. Okay, but tantra. Here, you don't worship God. You become God. Allama Prabhu, the greatest Siddha of Karnataka, says, nene nene yandare, yena nene yena. Ask me to remember, remember, what should I remember? Kayave kaila asavadaga, yena nene When the body becomes kailasa, when jiva becomes shiva, what should I remember? And he said, your kind of bhakti is a waste of time. Hoyitthalla bhakti jadavakuri. All your bhakti is flowing away like water. So one is the path of self-effacement, the other is the path of self-transformation. In South India, South India is supposed to be the place of the genesis of bhakti, Tamil Nadu. Two traditions developed parallelly. One is the Shaivite and Vaishnavite tradition of bhakti, Nayanmas and Advas. The other is Tamil Siddha tradition, which goes back to Tirumular, who wrote a great work called Tirumandiram. A lot of export quality yoga teachers today talk about uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutra, which is important, of course. But Thirumandiram is a much more comprehensive text than yoga. So, 
these two traditions are parallel. Sometimes they come to blows with each other. Sometimes they run into each other. Sometimes they merge into uh, one. Sometimes they diverge. So these Bhakti and Siddha traditions constitute what is called the essence of living Indian tradition. Again, once Tagore was asked, what is the essence of Indian tradition? Tagore said, it's not your Sanskrit tradition, Vedas and Puranas. Indian tradition consists in our bhakti and folk traditions. A lot of interchanges have happened between bhakti and folk traditions. Even many tribal communities of India have influenced bhakti traditions. For example, bills of Gujarat were produced a very powerful body of literature. They have their own Ramayana, the Mahabharata, which is perhaps older than Sanskrit Ramayana, the Mahabharata. They call themselves the followers of Kabir tradition, Nirguna tradition. And Kabir says, Everything is within the body. Another thing that's common to both Bhakti and Siddha traditions is that they reject the Samanic approach to spirituality. The Samana religions are two predominantly Buddhism and Jainism. The essence of Buddhism is this the world is dukkha, sabbe, sankara, dukkha. There is no self in anything. Sabbe, dhamma, anatta, yadanicham, tan dukkha. Whatever is impermanent is the source of sorrow. So what's the solution? Dukkha niroda. How to avoid dukkha? Ariyattanga marga. You follow the eightfold path. Follow the middle path. Avoid extremes. Control. Ultimately, you have to get out of the snare of mind, which is the creator of sabbe. Uh, uh, because mind is the source of everything, according to Buddhism. So the mind creates this illusion and through awareness and compassion get out of it. So the world is something that we have to extricate ourselves from. The other major Samanic religion, Jainism also says the same thing in a different way. They say the cosmos constitutes of Jiva and Ajiva. Ajiva is material, Jiva is the spiritual stuff. Ultimately, the jiva has to extricate itself from ajiva through ascetic practice of ascetism, non-violence, fasting, and the extreme approach, voluntary death. So, again, both these religions, Samanic religions, are religions of exclusion. I want to, don't use the word religion, paths of exclusion. Whereas Bhakti and Siddha traditions are the paths of inclusion. Bhakti doesn't reject the body, the world, in the final analysis. Though sometimes Bhakti literature is influenced by Samanic traditions, but predominantly it's a rejection of moksha. Unlike a Buddhist, a Jaina monk, a bhakta is not looking for moksha. Some people say everything emanates from the Vedas, but Vedic richas, hymns, are have an utilitarian motive. They pray to different deities, expecting them to give us rewards. As it is put in uh, Sri Rudra, which is the most important hymn in Krishna Yajur Veda, Chanchame, Mayaschame, Kamaschame, Kamaschame, Badranchame, Somanasaschame, give me all this, Chanchame, happiness in this world, Mayaschame, happiness in another world, Kamaschame, fulfill my desires, Anukamaschame, to fulfill this desire, I have many sub sub desires. If I want, if my karma is to have a, uh, some uh, latest model of car, 
I need money for that. Money if I don't have to, this is anukama. So, the in expectation of material gifts. Lord, give us our daily bread kind of devotion. Bhakti is not that. It's, there's no barter system in bhakti. You know, the best expressions of bhakti, Andar Thirupavi in Tamil, when the protagonist, Andar herself, who is wearing the persona of a gopika, she goes to Krishna's house with her other cowherd girls. At first, they ask for different kinds of gifts. The first stanza, she says, Narayana Neenamakka Puraitaruva. Lord Narayana will bless us with his drum. In Tamil tradition, Vishnu doesn't have the he has a drum. And then she says that there be when we when we perform this rite of taking a holy bath in the water body and going to Krishna's house, the land will be blessed with fertility. Livestock will increase. At another point, in the later stanza, it becomes very cruel. She says, on such auspicious days, we make pongal. You know, pongal is a sweet kichri that they make in Tamil Vaishnava temples. And uh, she says, when we eat that, there should be so much ghee, and it should flow down the elbow, you should be able to lick it. She asked for all these things. But when the, she, along with other gopikas, enters Krishna's, Nanda Gopala's house, wake up Krishna, and tell off his uh, spouse. In Tamil tradition, there is no Radha, it's called Napinnai. So get, get lost, we also love him. Then they look at him and say, Lord, we will not ask for any paltry thing in life after life after life. We want to be a slaves. This is the path of self effacement Akama Devi, Mudafas Vachana says. Chandna Malika Arjuna, Sira Haridu Vidara Prada Jagat Pita Vimbano. Chandna, if my head rolls down, I offer it up to you. Not ask for anything. Nijigunan Shiva is in one of his songs. Ninna Nani Na Bedali Deva. What are you talking about? What should I say to Shiva? What should I beg from you? Should I ask for your garments? You wear those disgusting tiger heights. Should I ask for a house? You live in that cremation ground. Or should I ask for a this this car in those this vehicle? You ride on that old lame bull. So what can I give you? You can't give me anything. I'm not expecting anything from you. So, bhakti is non-negotiable, non-utilitarian love of the divine. That is a joy. Of course, some master critics have said, master scholars have said, bhakti uh, is the consolidation of Indian caste system and slavery. Complete nonsense, because slavery in society is imposed from above. Bhakti is not imposed from love, from above. In Sufi tradition, the metaphor of Sufi bhakti is the story of Laila Majnu. If you look at it from the secular viewpoint, it's a story of romance from the Sufis use this metaphor to, uh, you know, to inculcate the Sufi uh, kind of, uh, you know, devo devotion. Majnu had no hopes of mating with Layla because she was already married. But he went on loving her without expectation. So like Majnu's love for Layla, Bhakti is the Bhakta's love for the Divine. And again, the word God has to be redefined in Indian tradition. In fact, God is not the right word, it's the deity. In Bhakti, you have Ishta Devata. Of course, Tagore gave it, he said, Jivan Devata, said Tagore. It's not a God, like a Christian God, living somewhere there, 
the transcendental God who frightens people with thunder and speaks through thunder. This God is not the God of terror, but the deity whom we create. Is, when Nisha said, God is dead, it was a great revolution in Europe. But in India, we knew it all along. In very Vedic Tantra ritual or Tantra ritual, when we worship a deity, we invoke the deity. And we worship the deity. And then we say, please go, come back when we need you next. Sri Mahaganabhadava, Hayami, Stapa, Yami, Puja, Yami, etc., etc. Sri Mahaganabhadim, Visajja, Yami, Punaragata. So we, Bhaktas, create gods. <coughs> like poets create metaphors, images. The expression of a deepest self, which is pleasing to oneself. Now, in Siddha tradition, in the yoga, of course, there are different levels, the, all the cosmos, but it's a kind of the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, all the Fourteen worlds are within this body. There are different lokas in this body. So a yogi takes this journey and starts from the lowest point and goes to the highest point. Only to realize there is no difference between here and hereafter. In Advaita experience, everything is one. In Kashmir, it is called Chidavanandai Karasaghana. It's a mass of unified, solidified, Consciousness. The same themes have come down into Bhakti and Siddha tradition, the songs and compositions, whether in the songs of Kabir, he rejects this path of self abnegation. He says, Kumbh me jale jale me kumbh bahar bhi tar paani tute kumbh jale jale hi samana isa tatakatya jnani. There's water in the pot, and pot inside the water, I mean, you drown it. You break the pot, water remains water. Devara Dasimaya, Dasimaya Devi says the same thing. Gatava no de do ditava khana leke, a ghatave ditava in the ditava salade. Why should you break the body to see the truth? Well, don't you realize, body itself is the truth. No difference between Jiva and Shiva. So why do Bhakti, why do all this Yoga? As they say in Zen, Zen Buddhism, every dog is a Buddha. But every dog is not a Buddha. Essentially every dog is Buddha. But unless the dog realizes this was Sakshatkara, realization, it's not intellectual understanding. It is the result of self detachment or self-transformation. So this is the essence of bhakti and uh, Siddha tradition, philosophical essence, which has so many branches all over India, so many languages. It's all-inclusive, at the same time all-transcending. It's everything and nothing. The Oriya, great uh, Nirguna poet Bhima Boy says, Shunno mandire vihoro, upar niche na koye, Shunno mandire vihoro. Sport in the ha hall of emptiness. And this tradition culminated in the poetry of Tagore. Tagore's Gitanjali, I think, is the final flowering of Bhakti tradition, Nirguna tradition, where it removed all sectarian images and made it into a completely secular imaginary. But in Bhakti and Siddha traditions, we have this. For example, the greatest Siddha poet of Karnataka, Krishna Sarusab, 
has composed thousands. There are many of them. In uh, one historian has uh, listed some uh, uh, 300 Swaravachanakaras, Tatvapadakaras, uh, who lived in Karnataka in the last two centuries. Even now they are there. For example, the song he composed, he sang first. I don't know who composed it, but it's in the same tradition. Right, Sharif writes about bed bug, he writes about toddy, writes about ganja. Sedi deya, batti sedi deya, sedi batti hogi, uddha mukha hogi, nada brahma guru pujiya madava, sedi deya, batti, suji, needle. Suji ye nidu moji, how wonderful your needle. Ye raja dhoda galda, teja kani sabanta, suji ye nidu moji. You are the most wonderful thing in this whole empire. Impada vukki nur adanta suji, needle made of beautiful steel. Sumpada daradi serva suji, suji to be to which we put this beautiful thread. Simpi garanna ke balavada suji, you are the strength of my brother, tailor brother. Company sarkar da vashavada suji, but now you become now you become the slave of company sarkar. British government. He says another remarkable thing. Mareviya, Ariviya, Hulivanta, Samayadi, Maremaya Varanta Suji. When I'm trying to stitch together this cloth, tattered cloth of forgetfulness, where do you disappear, O needle? Uh, so, it includes everything. And what is the chief expression of bhakti? Bhakti is not basic, it has some, it is not philosophy. Bhakti is practice. It is not the philosophy of practice to use interpolate Marxist terminology, but it is the practice of philosophy. In all the bhakti traditions, they are attacking people who preach a philosophy and do the opposite. Kallanagara Kandara Havanir, when they look at the stone cobra, they go and pour milk. Nijanagara Kandara? Oh. Barayya. If they find a real snake, they say, strike it, strike it. They run for life. There is one joke about Shankara Dvaita. One Shankara Dvaita in Kashi was giving a sermon to his disciples on Mayavada. When he was doing that, one drunken elephant started charging in that direction. The Guru took to hills. She said, what is this? He said, it is Maya. He said, Gajam Maya, Palayanam, Gajam Mithya, Galayanam Mithya. The, the elephant is an illusion. My running away is also an illusion. So to come back to, the, the, what is the chief expression of Bhakti? It is any kind of heart. In Narada Bhakti Sutra, the Lord Himself says, Naham Vasami Vaikunte Yoginam Rudaye Pinacha. I don't dwell in Vaikuntha, neither do you dwell in the hearts of yogis. Yadra Matmat Bhatta Gayante Tatratishta Vinarada. Where my devotees are singing, that's where I am. And if you look at the living traditions of Bhakti, like Varkari Panta Maharashtra, Varkari means pilgrimage. They made pilgrimage the important part of their devotional practice. Every year, Bhaktas go to walk to Pandarpur all the way, uh, walking and dancing and singing abhangs. If you listen to the singing of abhangs, it's meant for dancing. Bhakti's Spontaneous songs, spontaneous poetry, spontaneous, it has no rules. Love has no rules, bhakti has no rules. So, bhakti poetics is the poetics of spontaneity. Baswana said, O Jabajavana Nariye, I don't know the rules of beats. Taramana says, I don't know rhythms, counts. Devagana Brahmagana, I don't know the mythical feats. Kudala Sangamadeva, in a Kedilavagi. Oh, Kudala Sangamadeva, because nothing can be taken away from you. 
ಆನು ಬಲಿದಂತೆ ಹಾಡುವೆನು ಐ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಸ್ ಐ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಂಡಾಳ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಬಾಡೆಚೂಡಿಯ ಆಳುವ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಶಿ ಆಫರ್ಡ್ ಹರ್ ಗಾಲ್ ಗಾಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟು ದ ಇಮೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಶಿ ವುಡ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವೆರ್ ಇಟ್ and see if it is all right then it should and her uh, foster father periyar was he was furious he said how could you do this desacralization then he took it away and put it on the the day it goes it came back to her around her neck so bhakti is the violation of ritual in the name of love celebration of love rejection of rules in spontaneity which expresses itself best in song music dance and poetry so the greatest poets of india no wonder have been bhaktas and siddhas as kosen be said an illiterate weaver called kabir he is a greater poet than the great sanskrit poet kalidas and such singers have great ancestry their ancestor was meera who was a kshatriya prince and bhakti is the rejection of caste and creed there are two paramparas in our country no sociologist talked about it one illiterate uh, kabir panthiya in uh, bihar told me this one is acharya parampara shankaracharya this acharya that acharya where caste is very important hierarchic the other is guru parampara in guru parampara there is no higher lo shishna shri for the muslim and his guru was a brahmin kabir was a muslim his guru was supposed to be ramananda brahmin mm-hmm. and uh, uh, in nandra there was this um, uh, great uh, kalagnani his uh, uh, disciple siddappa was a muslim uh, brahmaya and people said what is this nonsense you are giving the initiation to muslim he said me kula me meni evaram badagitte emani telupudu lokuluku lokuluku kunni pokuluku ee dushtuluku durmarguluku the people asked me what is your caste what should i tell these holy people these wicked people muttullo puttina ನಾ ಕುಲಮು ಮುಟ್ಟುಲೋ ಪೆರುಗಿನ ನಾ ಕುಲಮು ಮುಟ್ಟುಲೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮುಡು ಮುಟ್ಟುಲೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಡು ಮುಟ್ಟುಲೋ ಹರುಡು ನಾ ಕುಲಮು ಸೊ ಮೈ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲಿಯಂ ಬಟ್ಲೆ ಸೆಡ್ ಉಮನ್ ಮೈ ಬಿ ಪ್ರೌಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಸಿ ಆನ್ ಲವ್ ಇನ್ ಟೆನ್ ಬಟ್ ಲವ್ ಪೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ಶನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಮೆಂಟ್ that's where all of us are born so what's so great of kanaka dasa says gutta 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 narita mele hirde nu kide netta na sarogna yo manuja rejection of caste system rejection of everything that limits human spirit expansion into great love or embracing our everything or freeing oneself from everything so both neti marga not this is there aniti marga everything is here because as tantras say in sanskrit sarvam sarvatmakam everything is contained in everything else in tamil siddha said andattile ulladu pindattile undu pindattile ulladu andattile undu what is in the cosmos also inside whatever this is the basis of bhakti and yoga even tagore in one of his songs said antaro mama vikoshito koro antaro torahi expand my inner mind o vela within me this is the essence of bhakti and this is the substance of the songs dance music and poetry of bhakti and siddha lore 
which are spoken in not only in the mainstream languages of India, but also in the innumerable dialects of India. And we should, some consolation, this, this tradition still survives. I just want to speak, because one important thing I left out, just give me three more minutes. What is the future? Now, in the modern times, these people went from home to home, village to village, town to town, singing and enlightening people. But later, when modern nitty made inroads, radio became important means of disseminating this. Now we have the technology, new technology. So the, the, the digital technology has become, and cinema also became an important dissemination. And the TV became, in the process, and also there are monstrous forms of bhakti uh, these days, uh, which is uh, 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 you know, ex expressed in uh, the uh, light and shows of uh, corporate uh, gurus, uh, uh, where the gurus come and dance like uh, Shah Rukh Khan uh, uh, and so on, uh, and being watched by Tamanna Bhatiyas and uh, Kangana Ranawats and uh, uh, Samantha Ruth Prabhus and so on and so forth. Now, people ask me wherever I go to speak on bhakti, what is, where is bhakti today? It's either in your heart or nowhere. Because these are forms of commercialization of bhakti. Bhakti, I said, is not for exchange. Bhakti is giving without expecting anything. But these people get everything without giving anything, except some entertainment. So instead of going to a uh, 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 big uh, uh, Bollywood cinema, you go and watch it, and you also feel you are spiritual because you're watching, you're going for a Shivaratri celebration and so on. Oh, sir. So in this ba uh, situation where Bhakti has uh, flowed into barren lands, you still have people like this who inherit and transmit and giving us a taste of that and how best to preserve and promote it. That's what we should think about. Okay. So because there's no time, I will shut up now. Okay. Thank you, Professor, for your in insights and uh, wonderful remarks. So before going for the question answer session, uh, I request Dharmana to present a vachara. Mm.
ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಧರ್ಮಣಿ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಎಸ್ ಸೆಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಆಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ಅವ್ರ ಭಕ್ತ ಈಸ್ ಅವ್ರ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಐ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಐ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ವಿತ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ಡ್ ಎ ಭಕ್ತ ವೈ ಯು ಆರ್ ಬಿಲೀವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ವೈ ಯು ಆರ್ ಫಾಲೋವಿಂಗ್ ದ ದಿಸ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಹಿ ಆಸ್ಕ್ then he replied i don't want to uh, leave the god alone means i don't want to god to suffer by the loneliness that's why i'm believing the god so this is a beautiful story on say heard so uh, one question i would like to ask professor so there are many streams in the bhakti tradition of course in shankara or madhva or in medieval they are all different you told about ishta devata concept also so can you please elaborate something about this ishta devata and kula devata and how we can understand the different streams of this bhakti in shankara or in madhva or in medieval tradition how we can understand it once uh, mahatma gandhi went to meet uh, sri narayan guru in kerala Sri Narayan Guru was a great Shiva Bhakta and Advaita. Gandhi was a Vaishnava, he believed in Advaita. Multiplicity, basically. They were sitting under a neem tree. Gandhi pointed to the leaves. See, look, so many leaves, they are all different. Sri Narayan Guru said, you pluck some of them, chew them. The taste is the same. Kabir said, Kuwa aneka paani yek. There are so many wells in the same water. So the essence of bhakti is the same. In some places, you have to drink water from the well, some places from the river, some places in desert from springs and so on. Because bhakti is an expression of the deep best human instinct to connect with the cosmos the great american philosopher walter uh, kaufman said more important than the instincts of sex and hunger is what he calls uh, ontological instinct to connect oneself with the whole universe that's how mythology is born that's how ritual is that's how bhakti is born to i am here i want to connect with everything in the world how do you do that to the essence which i see in ishta devata and why ishta devata ultimately every bhakta knows even those who saguna bhakta worship the particular form of the divine ultimately they know is formless tukaram says in one of the bangs he saw krishna with kaustuba and tulsi mala standing in a with a flute for a moment that is right and he opened it nirakar he is become formless because the saguna and nirguna form and formless particular devata and the ultimate divine which is formless are not mutually exclusive there are different aspects of the same allama pro put it sakara nirahakara vemberu swarupangalu both form and formless are abstractions one do ahwana one is invitation one do visajja the other is dissolution one do vyakula one is full of sorrow ಒಂದು ನಿರಾಕುಲ ದೇದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೌರುಲಸ್ ಉಭಯ ಕುಲ ರಹಿತ ನಮ್ಮ ಗೊಗ್ಗೇಶ್ವರನು ಬಟ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಗೊಗ್ಗೇಶ್ವರ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ಬೋತ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಲೆಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಎಸ್ ಟು ಸೇ ದ ಟ್ವೈತ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಅಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ವುಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಥಿಯರೀಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ದನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಮೇಕ
But Ramakrishna knew that all of them are the face of same consciousness. When you are Jagrata Vasta in your wakeful experience, you live in the world of multiplicity, in dream, Beda Beda, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called it Spanta, Beda Beda, and then complete Advaita in your own Turiya. So all these are possibilities of human experience, dimensions of human experience, all dimensions of human experience, and all variety, because how does one worship the Ishta Devata? One can see the Ishta Devata as a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Girlfriend, not so many, because uh, uh, maybe to, from now it's time, now that feminist writing is coming, we may have that kind of bhakti also. Or friend, father, master, slave, they can see God as slave. And then uh, uh, in the, there's another Tantra, Veera Bhava, where, when Kali, Kali is worshipped as one's wife. And the Ramakrishna spoke, he said, I, I, don't, I don't have the courage to do that kind of thing. I want to call her Ma. It's easy. So all possibilities of human experience are accommodated in Bhakti. That's why you find this unity and also multiplicity in bhakti, because Kabi said, Kua anek pani ek. Thank you, sir. So, Dharma Navaranu, no, no, Abhangad of the K, take a front and how Abhangad. Oh, I'm not 
ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಧರ್ಮಣ್ಣ ಅವರೇ ನಾನು ನಿಮಗೆ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಯನ್ನು ಕೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಪರಂಪರೆಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾವು ಮಾತಾಡುವಾಗ ಹಗಲುವೇಷಧಾರಿಗಳು ಅಂತ ಬಂತು ಬೇಡ ಜಂಗಮ ಜನಾಂಗ ಅಂತ ಬಂತು ನನಗೆ ಒಂದು ಈ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪರಂಪರೆಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಸಂಕ್ಷಿಪ್ತವಾಗಿ ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದಾ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಹಿಂದಿನವರು ನಿಮ್ಮ ತಂದೆ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೋದು ಅಜ್ಜ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೋದು ಅವರು ಈ ಹೇಗೆ ಈ ಕೀರ್ತನ ಪರಂಪರೆಯನ್ನು ಮುಂದುವರಿಸಿದರು ಇದರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನನಗೊಂದು ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದಾ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಜಾತಿ ಅಂದರೆ ಬೇಡ ಬುಡಗ ಜಂಗಮ ಅಂತ ಬರ್ತದೆ ಅಲೆಮಾರಿ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಹಗಲು ವೇಷಧಾರಿಗಳು ನಾವು ಹಗಲು ವೇಷಧಾರಿಗಳಂದರೆ ಸಿಟಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಹಳ್ಳಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಹಳ್ಳಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗಿ ಭೀಮ ಆಂಜನೇಯ ಮತ್ತು ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ವೇಷಗಳನ್ನು ಹಾಕಿ ಎರಡು ಮೂರು ದಿವಸ ಹಳ್ಳಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರದಕ್ಷಿಣೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮನೆ ಮನೆಗೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಒಂದೆರಡು ವಚನಗಳನ್ನು ಆಡೋದು ದಾಸ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯಗಳನ್ನು ಆಡೋದು ಮತ್ತು ಶಿಸ್ರಾಳ ಶರೀಪರ ಪದ್ಯಗಳು ತತ್ವ ಪದ್ಯಗಳು ಆಡಿ ತಾಯಿ ಮೇಲೆ ಪದ್ಯಗಳು ಆಡೋದು ತಾಯಿ ಮೇಲೆ ಪದ್ಯಗಳು ಆಡಿ ಒಂದೆರಡು ಪದ್ಯಗಳಾಡಿ ಆಗಿನ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಜ್ಜವರು ಧಾನ್ಯ ಇಸ್ಕೊತಿದ್ರಂತೆ ಧಾನ್ಯ ಮತ್ತು ಗೋವು ದನ ಮತ್ತು ಕುರಿ ಕೋಳಿ ಬಟ್ಟೆ ಆವಾಗ ರುಮಾಲು ಬೆಳ್ಳಿ ರುಮಾಲು ಅದು ಎಂಥದಂಥದ್ದು ರುಮಾಲುಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಸುತ್ತುತ್ತಿದ್ರಂತೆ ಅವೆಲ್ಲ ಕೊಡ್ತಿದ್ರಂತೆ ನಮಗೆ ಊರು ಮುಗಿದ ನಂತರ ಮತ್ತು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಹಳ್ಳಿಗೆ ಪ್ರವೇಶ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಹಳ್ಳಿಗೆ ಪ್ರವೇಶವಾಗಿ ಅಲ್ಲೊಂದು ಎಂಟು ದಿವಸ ಹೀಗೆ ಪ್ರವಾಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ 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 ಬಂದು ಹುಬ್ಬಳ್ಳಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸೆಟ್ಲ್ ಆದ್ವಿ ಹುಬ್ಬಳ್ಳಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸೆಟ್ಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಈಗ ಉಡುಪಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದು ಉಡುಪಿಯಲ್ಲಿದ್ದೆ ಹಳ್ಳಿಗಳಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ತಿರ್ಗಾಡ್ತೀರ ಅಂದರೆ ಹಳ್ಳಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಈ ಭಜನೆ ಇರೋದು ಆವಾಗ ನಮ್ಮ ಹಿರಿಯರೆಲ್ಲ ಹಳ್ಳಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಈಗ ಈಗ ಪೇಟೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗ್ತೇವೆ ಹಳ್ಳಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗ್ತೇವೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕಡೆ ಪೇಟೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಮನೆಗಳಿಗೆ ಹೋದಾಗ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಗರಗಳಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವೀಕಾರ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರ ಭಜನೆಯನ್ನು ಅಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಈ ಉಡುಪಿ ಮಂಗಳೂರಿನಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಜೆ ಎಸ್ ಪಿ ಅವರು ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರೆಲ್ಲ ಭಜನೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಪಂಚಪ್ರಾಣ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಪಂಚಪ್ರಾಣ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಂದ ಆಡ್ತಾರೆ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಂದ ಆಡ್ತಾರೆ ಮತ್ತು ಶಾಲೆಗೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಹೋಗಿದ್ರು ಕೂಡ ಸಾಯಂಕಾಲ ಅವ್ರ ಮನೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಟಾಳ ಬೆಳಿಬೇಕು ಏಳು ಗಂಟೆಯಿಂದ ಏಳುವರೆವರೆಗೆ ಸೊ ಈ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿಯೂ ನಗರಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಭಜನಾ ಪರಂಪರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ನೀವು ಕೀರ್ತನ ಪರಂಪರೆ ಇದೆ ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಓಕೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಈಗ ನಾವು ಆಡುವಾಗ ಉಡುಪಿ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಸಪ್ತಾಹ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಗಳಿಗೆ ಹೋಗ್ತೇವೆ ಹೋದಾಗ ನಾವು ಒಂದೆರಡು ಮೂರು ಭಜನೆ ಆಡಿದರೆ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಬಂದು ಮೂರು ನಾಲ್ಕು ಭಜನೆ ಹಾಳ್ತಾರೆ ನಾವೇ ಅವರಿಗೆ ತಬಲೆ ಹಾರ್ಮೋನಿಯಂ ಸಾಕು ಮಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ನಿಮಗೆ ಸೊ ನಾವು ದ ಫ್ಲೋರ್ ಈಸ್ ಓಪನ್ ಟು ದ ಆಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಯಾರ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ವಿದ್ ಇನ್ ಫೈವ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ವೈಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ ದ ಸೆಷನ್ First of all, I'd like to thank uh, all the dignitaries on stage uh, for a fabulous session. Thumba Thanyavada Gadu, sir. Nimana Nan Udupi Lu Kheli Dhani Nang Thumba Santusha Aitho Nim Voice Kheli Dhani Nang Thumba Santusha Aitho Nim Voice Kheli Dhani Nang Pandit Vekteshu Kumaru Mathe Bheemsen Joshi Aur Napka Bharatad Nang So, uh, my question is to uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Shiv Prakash. Uh, sir, when look, you addressed this a little bit, but when looking at this, uh, this whole Bhakti traditions and all these different traditions within uh, Bhakti and Siddha, uh, 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 you know when we look at this from an outsider's point of view uh, from an academic point of view uh, how do we reconcile the philosophical conflict that may you know the the contradictions that may lie between these very traditions because uh, mine may be a naive understanding but uh, you know uh, some of these are aligned with shaivism some with vaishnavism and some with even lingayatism right uh, with uh, baswanna and uh, allama prabhu and akmaha devi's vachanas uh, how do we reconcile that as academicians uh, when when you said you know it is about uh, the uh, you know uh, between school of thoughts and experiential uh, understanding of uh, the traditions how do we within the academia understand and reconcile
objective models, you know, to understand experiential phenomena, there is always a gap. It's like trying to draw water from a well with a spoon. A lot of, uh, because I, when I was teaching in JNU, a lot of my students were working on rituals and some bhakti traditions. But unless they invoked Anglo-American authorities, their uh, you know, proposals wouldn't get approved. They had to put some masala of that kind. But I told them, you do it for your livelihood. Like a prostitute does everything for livelihood. But no, this is fake. Because how can you understand something that's happening within from without? In the West, Psychology and psychiatry tried objective methods, then parapsychology came. But it cannot address this phenomenon. You have to change the model of analysis. And among Indian authors on this tradition I know, there is one great uh, author, Gopinath Kaviraj, for reasons best known to our uh, scholars, he is not so well known in him as Hiriyanna or uh, Radha Krishnan and uh, all these shallow philosophers. He had the experience, he could also talk about it. You know, tradition we have models. Acharya Abhinav Gupta, the greatest mind that ancient India produced, was a great philosopher and he was a great mystic. And even our bhaktas in the compositions, they have not only expressed the experience, there is something called inbuilt, inbuilt poetics, inbuilt philosophy, inbuilt theory in that. Through that, they have tried to explain this. Tagore has done it. Roop shalare dubai maya, roop ratum. So, you have to look for it, what they are saying. The problem is, when you address the past in India, particularly in the humanities, we try to, because of humanities, uh, you know, uh, theoretical foundations are borrowed, based on wrong models. But, if you look into our tradition, people who had this experience also evolved ways of talking about it through the inbuilt aesthetics. They didn't write theories of aesthetics. There are some uh, aesthetic theories produced by bhakti traditions like this uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahadi tradition, uh, uh, Rupa Goswami and others did something of the kind, but it's incommensurate with the richness of the bhakti tradition. So learn from those great ancestors and try to evaluate your Western theories from their understanding. So, when, when, but talking about some people say it's, it's a movement. My own former colleague, uh, uh, Manager Pandey, a great Hindi critic, in his book, uh, Surdas and uh, Hindi Nirgun Parampara, he says, Bhakti is the first pan Indian movement. And somebody, Michael Blake, uh, Black Tower, Blake Tower, talking about uh, uh, Virasheva tradition, says that this is the reaccession, it's a reactionary tradition, counter revolution. And somebody shout and he says, uh, Bhakti, uh, Lingayat Bhakti is the revolution of mystics. And Hiramalu uh, who says, this is Hindu Protestant movements. My God, when there is no Catholicism, how can Protestantism come into India? So this shows how fake our models are, all borrowed. For once, let's think our own thoughts. When uh, Ole Shainka got Nobel Prize, Chinuva Chibay said, Ole Shainka has proved that we can play the games according to their rules. Now let's start playing our games 
according to our own rules. Somebody's there. question is how do we about the pedagogical academy i've already answered that question uh, what is the question about performance see we think that bhakti tradition is the tradition of repetitions but it's the tradition of continuity with change when he was singing basavanna's vachana he changed one word Instead of Shirave Honna Karashavaya, he says Shirave Degulavaya. When he was singing Namdev Sabhan, Guru Vitala, Guru Devata Vitala, he said Guru Daivata Vitala. Singers modify as they sing. See, because the diachronicity of Bhakti tradition was not documented, cannot be documented. At some point when we document, it becomes synchronic. We think that is the text, like Vedic text. But in our bhakti and folk tradition, and a lot of our folklorists, fake lorists are struggling with this problem. Let us assume there is a text. Now the latest uh, in thing in uh, folklore is this, uh, the, uh, some uh, uh, Finnish model. Uh, you, you, one, do one documentation and analyze that. My God, it's changing every minute, every day. If the same singer is singer singing, it will change to wear it. Our performers, you know, traditional performers like Bhavai people, Lekshagan, Tirukut, they keep on changing it. So we think it's a text because our understanding of religion was modern understanding of religion was inspired by uh, logocentric understanding religion in the West. We think book is the basis. Without bhakti, poetry. We forgot poetry was part of song, song was part of dance, and dance was part of pilgrimage or ritual or festival. But in Tamil, there is this uh, Karakalami, the first uh, Shaivite poet. Her poetry is very great. And she is the, after, in Sanskrit, for the first time, you get the description of Nataraja in Indian language, you know, Thiruvadanga Now, I enjoyed it as poetry, but later I realized that every year there is a ritual, a pilgrimage, people uh, undertake from different parts of Tamil Nadu to the Karekalame temple, temple near Nagarkoil, and the poems are sung as part of it. Abhang, for example. When they go Varkari, Varkari means one who goes on pilgrimage to Pandarpur. It's part of that, I don't want to use the word uh, that uh, Richard uh, Shetner word of performance. Uh, it has uh, lots of problems with it. I would like to call it theatrical embo embodiment. Uh, we have to find some other word. In Sanskrit we had the word prayoga, that was the best word. 
Uh, I don't know how to translate that into English. And uh, the words come, that come, this stupid word, force of bad habits, performance, you have to find some other word. So it's been changing, it's been dynamic, and it's been uh, composite. Nati Shastra Bharata said, Natya, drama, the composite uh, art, which has uh, uh, drishya, shravya, music, dance, painting, everything. Similarly, bhakti expression is also, also multi-arts expression, multi-dimensional expression, dynamic tradition. So, we have to keep that in mind. So, you can write about it, theorize about it, but don't go too far away from what they themselves are saying. Like in some, time, some years ago, in Sanskrit University in Kerala, when a great Marxist Vice Chancellor from JNU was made the Vice Chancellor, he organized a seminar on Dhanya Loka. Nobody quoted Ananda Vardhana, Ramana Gupta. They were all quoting Foucault, Derrida, Guttare, and all these people. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, now it is time to wind up the session. So, and it is really an honor to have you here. So, thanks to Dharmana and Manjunath and Suresh. As this is an attempt to bring uh, the academicians and the practitioners together. We have uh, done this experiment earlier also under the guidance of Professor Neeta in MAP. We invited Dharmana also. So, Dharmana, you are here at the end of the day. Ili kelak itu, nampu jatuh kuti diri istu itu. Ni juga yang adre, nampu ni muka jatuh mana mana ke berbeku. Iden artha mardi kalau berbeku adre. To understand this, we have to go with them. Mana mana ke bandu ni muka jatuh nampu idre matra. Iden lah artha mardi kalau kagat. Tapi tu istu jadi iden dekik. Ni muka nampu thanya mada hertene. So my sincere gratitude to the organizers of this mila for this opportunity. Thank you. One of the most important things that I want to say is that you are the first one. Thank you. Thank you. Yet to Nimadana, Yet to Nimadana, 
very captivating performance and thank you so much Shiva Prakash sir for enlightening us about bhakti tra traditions. I would now like to call upon Dr. Shilpa Kalyan, HOD of Department of Liberal Arts, Social Science, Humanities and Social Sciences to uh, present a memento to the esteemed dignitaries on stage.